Hello, in this video we're going to have a look at the circumstances where we would use either Pythagoras or trigonometry to solve some problems with right angle triangles. So both Pythagoras and trigonometry we use with right angle triangles. Pythagoras we're going to use when we're finding missing sides. Trigonometry we're going to have something to do with angles. We're either going to be using an angle to find a missing side or using it to find a missing angle. Right, what we've got. Uh, we have got a triangle here. It's right angled. Uh, I've got two sides, two and four, an angle of 26.57 degrees. And I'm trying to find the length of my hypotenuse. So it's the side opposite my right angle. I want to work out what that length of x is. What I'd like you to do in a minute is pause the video, but don't do it just yet. Um, I would like you to work out uh, whether you're going to use either Pythagoras or trigonometry to... Uh, find that value of x, the length of the hypotenuse. Once you've done that, uh, work through the maths, see if you can find the length, uh, and then restart the video. Okay, so pause the video now, uh, work out Pythagoras or trigonometry, and work out an answer for the value of x or increase. Okay, hopefully you've worked out whether we're going to use Pythagoras or trigonometry, and you've come up with an answer t uh, for the hypotenuse for me. So, some of you might have used uh, Pythagoras. Let's have a, a little look. Uh, we've got two lengths, four and two. We're trying to find the hypotenuse. We can write our formula down. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared. Substitute our values. Uh, work out our square of the hypotenuse equal to 20. Take the square root and we get a length of 4.47. Uh, some of you might have chosen to use some trigonometry. We've got uh, the opposite side and we've got the adjacent side trying to find the hypotenuse. So some of you might have used the sine ratio. Uh, we've got the opposite length and we're trying to find the hypotenuse. So we can use that sine ratio over here and we can work out the length of the missing side, length of my hypotenuse, opposite over my side of my angle, 2 divided by sine, 26.57, gives me x point uh, 4.47. Same value that I got if I used trigonometry, uh, Pythagoras. Uh, third option, uh, because we've also been given the adjacent side, we could also use the cosine ratio. So we've got the adjacent, we've got that, uh, we're trying to find the hypotenuse, so A over H, uh, we've got the angle, so we can use the cosine ratio, and we've got hypotenuse, adjacent over cos, so X is going to equal 4 divided by cos of 26.57, we get the same value for that length of the hypotenuse, 4.47. So three possible uh, methods to get us to the correct answer. Any of those three, perfectly correct, and will get you full marks in the exam. Uh, in this case, Pythagoras, possibly a little bit easier. Um, you might be a bit more comfortable, so with Pythagoras, we're still getting to grips a little bit with the trigonometry. Um, that might be our starting solution. But any of those three will work perfectly. Okay, what I would like you to do now, I would like you to have a look at another example. Um, this one here, another right angle triangle. Um, we've got two sides for, this time we've been given the length of the hypotenuse, 7. Uh, we're trying to work out the length, so the height of the triangle, one of the shorter sides. We've got this angle of 55.15. So again, I want you to work out whether you're going to use Pythagoras or trigonometry and work out what that value of x is. Once you've done that, once you restart the video. But pause the video now. Pythagoras or trigonometry, what's that value x? Okay, hopefully you've worked out whether you're going to use Pythagoras or trigonometry and you've got a value for x for me. Some of you might have gone for the Pythagoras option. So we've got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This time, because we're finding the shorter side, we're going to end up doing a subtraction. So we've got the square of the length of the hypotenuse. We're taking away the square of one of the shorter sides. Uh, 33 for the square of my value x. I need to take the square root and I get a value of 5.74. Uh, some of you might have gone for the trigonometry option. So the option I've got down here, I've gone for sine. We're trying to find the opposite side. We know the length of the adjacent and we know the length of the hypotenuse. We're trying to find O. So we need to use one of the ratios that's got the O in. So I've used the sine ratio sine equals opposite over hypotenuse, um, or I can rearrange to get the opposite, it's equal to the hypotenuse times the sine. 
So I'm trying to find my opposite sides, Let's cover it up. I've got opposites equal to sine times the hypotenuse. Sine times, uh, 7 times sine 55.15 gives me a value of 5.74. Same value that I've got over here. I could have used the tan ratio, I chose to use the sine. But actually, again, we had three possible options to come up with the same value. In this case, the Pythagoras uh, approach, possibly a little bit more difficult. I had to remember that I'm taking the difference between these two values to get my shorter side. Um, possibly slightly more likely to go wrong with that answer over here. The trigonometry approach, quite a bit shorter actually, 7 times sine of 55.15, need to make sure I'm using the right ratio, um, but I can get to the same value. Either approach, completely correct. Uh, okay, just going to pause there. Okay, so in summary, uh, we are going to use Pythagoras. If we've been given two sides, don't know any information about the angles, but we're trying to find the third side. So it might be the longest side, the hypotenuse, might be one of the short sides. But we know two of the lengths, and we're trying to find the third. Uh, trigonometry, we can use if we've got uh, one side and one angle, and we're trying to find one of the missing sides. Or we've actually been given two or three of the sides, and we're trying to find one of the angles. So every time you're trying to find an angle, you've got to be using trigonometry. Uh, if we've been given two sides and one angle, just like the two examples we've looked at so far, we've got a choice. We can use either trigonometry or Pythagoras. Uh, what I'd like you to do now is have a look at the attachment, have a look at the um, last but one page, and it's got a bunch of triangles on, and you need to work out which ones of those techniques you're going to use. Are you going to use Pythagoras? Are you going to use trigonometry? Or have you got the choice? Could you use either? Okay, good luck.